There we go. And I'm going to start. All right. Webinar has started. And we're going to broadcast to Facebook. but not on my own Facebook, on Art Gallery of Windsor. There we go. All right. Greetings to folks coming in. Oh, and are on live on Facebook. Brilliant. OK. So hello to everyone coming in today. We're going to be starting very shortly. We just Take some time this Monday, get seated, get comfortable, and enjoy the next half hour. All right, brilliant. It looks like our tech is all set up. So um, we'll jump right in since we just have the half hour. <laughs> so welcome everyone to Mindful Mondays uh, at the Art Gallery of Windsor. My name is Abby Lee Hallett. I am your audience engagement coordinator, and I'm so happy to be introducing this Mindful Monday, which will be led by both Michaela Muldoon and Sophie Hinch. And just a reminder for folks who may be turning or turning in, <laughs> tuning in for the first time, clearly it's a Monday, my apologies. Um, with these Mindful Mondays, we Tune in, join in together from our own spaces on Zoom for some mindful looking art appreciation and just some general calm because Mondays can be very overwhelming, very busy, and we want to try to create this space to start our week off on the right foot. So with that, um, before we go into the meditation and the art activity, I'm going to read out our land acknowledgement. Again, for those who may not be joining us for the first time. This is something you've probably heard several times now, um, but I, we always encourage that um, each time you hear this to engage with it in a meaningful way, in a new way, and to allow this to stay with you throughout our half hour together, as well as long after our time together has ended. So I'm going to read this now. While this program is happening digitally, today I want to acknowledge that I am physically situated on Anishinaabe territory, the traditional territory of the Three Fires Confederacy of First Nations, comprised of the Ojibwe, the Odawa, and the Potawatomi. Today, the Anishinaabe of the Three Fires Confederacy are represented by Walpole Island First Nation. We want to state our respect of the historical and ongoing authority of Walpole Island First Nation over its territory. Okay, so with that, I am now going to hand it over to Michaela to lead us through our meditation. Thank you very much for that introduction and for reading the land acknowledgement, Abby Lee. So today we're focusing on the element of earth in our meditation and in our artwork. And I'm going to lead a, a grounding meditation for you today. So this is a meditation that you can do that um, focuses on different parts of the body. I've heard that the military uses it to help their soldiers fall asleep faster, um, you know, in their high stress jobs to relax. And it's especially effective if you want to take it outside and truly connect with the earth, either by lying down on the grass or even just like having your feet placed on the concrete to draw from the energy of the earth. So we're going to start today by finding a comfortable position. You could either lie down on your back or you can have a seat and have your feet rooted on the ground. Whatever is most comfortable for you. And you can choose to close your eyes or you can choose to focus on the breathing bubble on screen here as you do this so that you can focus on your breath at the same time that you're focusing on the different parts of your body. So this grounding meditation is going to be a body scan grounding meditation. And that means that we're going to focus on the different parts of our body from bottom to top bit by bit. 
So once you've gotten yourself all comfortable and settled and everything, begin just by becoming aware of your toes, big to small, just focus on your big toe all the way down to your littlest toe. This little piggy went to the market and you know, wee, wee, wee all the way home, toe by toe. You don't even have to move them, just become aware of their existence, just aware that they're there in that stillness. And you may notice a tingling sensation in these parts of your body as you shift your awareness to them. We take for granted the different parts of our body, the fact that they exist at all from moment to moment and that they're just very much alive as much as our minds are alive as we go through our days focusing on our work. Just focus on the life that is in your toes. Now slowly shift all of your feet and your heels. Feel the arch. Become aware of the arch in your feet and the top of your feet. Just feel the energy of the arch of your foot running parallel to the energy at the top of your foot. You can feel both of those at the same time. And feel the connection between the tops of your feet, the balls of your feet and your, your heels. Just feel how all the sinews and muscle of your feet are connected in that way. And then move your awareness to your ankles. You might feel their existence in a sort of circular way, the circumference of, of your ankles. Or you may feel like an up and down sort of energy just running the length of your ankles. Be aware of the surface of your skin there. Be aware of the bones underneath. And then move your focus to your calves and your shins. Calves at the back, shins at the front. Bones of your shins are very strong bones. You just reflect on that strength as you feel the bone just beneath the skin there, the strength in your legs. And you can reflect back at the same time towards your calves, the muscle, the muscles in the calves are also very strong, just like the bones of the shins. And again, you can be aware of the surface of the skin, the air, just grazing over your skin like that. Maybe you have a little bit of a, a breeze in your house from the AC, or maybe you're just kind of soaking in the humidity of the summer air. And then move your awareness to your knees. 
backs of the knees are kind of soft and vulnerable, but that's okay because you're safe right now. And then the kneecaps. Become aware once again of just the, the muscle and the bone and the skin all working in tandem to form the wonder that is your body. Just be aware of your knees. Do you feel that tingling sensation? Notice what sensations you feel. There is no right or wrong sensation to feel. And if you find your mind wandering at all during this practice, that's okay. You can just gently bring your mind back to your body and be compassionate and kind to yourself because it's not always easy to keep your focus just exclusively on the existence of your body. And then move your awareness up to your thighs. Thighs are just as strong as your calves. And then move your awareness up towards your pelvic area, so your glutes, your hips. There's a chakra somewhere in there. I'm not sure which one it is. I don't remember, but that's okay. Because right now we're not even focusing on chakras per se, unless you want to, you know what chakras there, go for it. Otherwise, just focus once again on the existence of this part of your body. You can move it around a little bit if you want to. You don't have to. Just be aware that it is there, whether it's doing anything or not. And then shift your awareness to your torso. It's the biggest part of your body. Your shoulders all the way down to your hips, excluding your arms. Release the tension in your shoulders if there is any. Just let your shoulders rest. Let them exist. Notice the internal sensations, not just the external ones. How does your stomach feel? How do your lungs feel as you're breathing? How does your heart feel right now? Is it relaxed? Is it beating nice and steady? Maybe something's worrying you and your heart beats a little bit fast, that's okay. Don't judge any of these sensations. Don't judge any of these feelings. However you're feeling right now, whether it's pleasant or not, it is okay to feel that way. Just let it be, let it happen. Be aware that it's there. Accept that it's there and that it will pass eventually. Bring your awareness to your fingers. Wiggle them if you want to, you don't have to. Might feel good to kind of release that tension a little bit by stretching your fingers out. A lot of us, especially now working from home, we use our fingers a lot. 
We use our fingers a lot as we type at the computer. We use them for cooking, preparing our meals. We use them for cleaning. Sometimes our fingers just need attention and appreciation. Thank you for doing what you do to help me survive every day. And let's extend that gratitude also to the rest of our hands. Focus on our palms and the back of our hands. Maybe have some whole hand awareness going on. And the hands are a very sensitive area, so you might especially feel that tingling sensation right now. Let's move the awareness up to our wrists, forearms, all the way up to our elbows, just that entire forearm area. No need to bend your elbows or unbend them, no matter how they're positioned. Just remember how it feels when they are bent or when they aren't, that mobility there. And same with the wrists. You can wriggle them if you want to, to bring some sensation back into your body. Whatever you choose, that's fine. And just like with your legs, be aware of the cool or the warm air on your skin. And let's take that awareness even further to our upper arms and the muscles there. And all the way back up to our shoulders, reconnecting with the torso, the bridge between the arms and the torso, the shoulders. And if they've tightened up again, make sure that you just relax them and let them drop again as you bring your awareness up to your neck. Maybe if you swallow, you can feel that sensation. Feel the air going down your windpipes, through your neck. Now let's shift the awareness to our head. And there's a lot to notice with your head. You can feel your scalp. Maybe you've got your hair pulled back. Does your scalp feel tight? That's okay if so. Maybe your scalp feels nice and cool with your hair pulled back. Protects you from the hot weather. You can feel your cheeks and your jaw hinges. You can just sort of let those relax because we tend to tighten those up throughout the day. Just give yourself a moment to loosen those. Your eyes, whether they're open on the breathing bubble or closed, just to be completely aware of your body. Just allow yourself to feel the presence of your eyelids. existence of your nose of all the body parts that don't really move at all that's the one but just be aware that it is there just feel this existence and try to take like a whole facial awareness just now and feel the interconnectedness of your features how they work in tandem to make up your face And keep your face, try to keep it as relaxed as possible through the rest of the day. Just take that with you so that you're not holding any tension in your face or in your head. And this has gone on for a fairly long time, so we're going to bring it back now. 
bring our awareness back to the present outside of our bodies again. And I'm going to turn it over to Sophie for today's art activity and story. Thank you, Sophie, for your patience. Absolutely. Thank you, Mikhail. I feel grounded. I feel ready to look at some works of art. And we have a really beautiful work of art for everyone today. So as you can see on your screen here, we have a work by Lionel L. Fitzgerald entitled Rocks at the Water's Edge. It was created in 1944, and it's a watercolor on paper. And before we do a deep dive into the work, I wanted to share a little bit more about the artist to find out who this person was. The name might be familiar to some, but let's discover this artist together. So Lionel Fitzgerald was a Canadian artist and art educator, and he was the only member of the group of seven based in Western Canada. And he worked almost exclusively in Manitoba, where he captured the essence of the prairie in his art. He explored his surroundings and he wanted to represent simple living things. And his landscapes and still lives were drawn from his immediate surroundings, whether it was the view out the back lane of outside his house, um, looking over outside, at his neighbor's yard, or even just a simple potted plant on his window sill. And during the blistering heat of summer, much like today, you would find Fitzgerald outside, sitting in the great outdoors, exposed to the elements, painting his surroundings. And we have a close up here of the work so we can see all of the details that went into this particular painting. And his goal as an artist was to convey his reactions to his environments, his reactions to others in color and in form. And his visual language grew as his style became more and more abstract. And he's quoted in saying that seeing a tree, a cloud, an earth form always gave me greater feelings of life. And he viewed nature as living and growing and never static. And one of his former students, who is also an artist, remembered that Fitzgerald was a very earthy man and he loved nature and simple things. He was philosophic, but in a simple, not complex form or way. And he taught you to think. And this work does exactly that, it challenges us, it challenges us. And looking at the work here close up, the perspective is quite unusual. We're not too sure if we're looking up at the work or looking down, it's cropped and there's some very jumbled forms. The color palette is soft. And his focus was on the microcosm of nature with its complex relationship between shapes and color and where the shore becomes a universe of its own. It's almost like we're looking under a microscope, but it's a, a very expansive landscape. And the summer of 1942 was particularly significant for the artist. It was an important time. He visited British Columbia for the very first time and he stayed with his daughter on Bowen Island. And the landscape was new and quite different from what he saw in Manitoba. And this really motivated him and inspired him and challenged the artist to produce new works of art. And he returned to Bowen Island the following two summers to sketch and paint with watercolors and colored pencils. And he focused his attention on the seashore, exploring subjects such as rocks and driftwood and we can see an example of that here in this particular piece, which was probably produced in British Columbia. And he considered nature to be a living and organic entity. Go on to the last close up here 
where we can see the artist has placed color in very specific formations to create the, the little crevices of, of those rocks and the driftwood um, on the shoreline. And there we go. We can see the entire picture there on the screen. It's a very calm and, and serene work. It takes me back to Point Pelee or along the, the shores of Lake Erie, the driftwood and the rocks. It's a really peaceful um, picture. And I have a, a short little activity that we can do before we say goodbye for today. And if you'd like to participate at home, um, feel free to do so. What you'll need is quite simple. Um, in terms of material, I'll ask you to grab four pebbles um, or four rocks that you might have. I like to collect rocks wherever I go on vacation or short day trips. And um, so I've got four rocks placed in front of me. You can use pebbles or seashells, anything that you might have at home. Um, so I want you to get comfortable. You can follow along on the screen as well. I've got some virtual rocks that you can use to participate. But I just want you to begin by taking a deep breath and just um, grounding yourself like Michaela taught us, right? Just taking the time to slow down and just to ground yourself. Feel your body get settled nice and comfortable. Sit up nice and tall. And I want you to pick up the first pebble, either virtually with your eyes on the screen or at home if you have a pebble or a rock, you can hold on to it and grab it. And I want you to look at it, turn it around, feel all of its facets and sides, all the nooks and crannies, look at the colors. And I want you to place it on your hand like so. And I want you to pretend that this is a flower. It might take a little bit of imagination, but I'm sure that you can do it. Now place your other hand on top of the rock. And I want you to imagine yourself as a flower. And there's a flower in each of us. And this flower likes to try new things and it feels beauty and love. And I want you to breathe in and say, I see myself as a flower. And as you breathe out, I want you to feel that love. And you can place the first pebble back down in front of you. I'd like you to pick up your second pebble, either virtually with the pebble up on the screen or if you have a pebble, you can pick up that second pebble and again, look at it and feel it and place it in your hands. And I want you to pretend that this is a mountain. You can put your other hand on top of that rock and imagine yourself as that mountain. And there's a mountain in each of us. The mountain is strong, no matter what is going, around, going on around it. You feel confident and powerful. And as you breathe in, you can say, I see myself as a mountain. And as you breathe out, I feel confident and strong. And you can place that second pebble in front of you. You can pick up the third pebble. Again, either virtually with your eyes or physically with your hands. And I want you to look at that pebble, at your third pebble, and place it again in the palm of your hand. And pretend that this is water. And you can place your hand on top of that pebble and imagine yourself as water. There's water in each of us. And when the water is still, you can see things clearly. You feel peaceful and calm. And breathing in, you can say, I see myself as water. And breathing out, I feel calm. And you can place the third pebble in front of you. Lastly, I would like you to pick up the fourth pebble 
And again, look at it. Feel it with your fingertips. Is it rough or smooth? What is the texture like? And what about the color? And I'd like you to place it again in the palm of your hand. And I want you to pretend that this is the sky. Now put your other hand on top of your rock or your pebble and imagine yourself as the sky. And there is wide open spaces in each of us. And with freedom and space, there's plenty of room for happiness. You feel happy and free. And breathing in, you can say, I see myself as the sky. And breathing out, I feel free. And you can place the fourth pebble in front of you. And you can breathe deeply and wiggle your toes and breathe deeply and wiggle your fingers. And if your eyes are closed, you can open them when you're ready. And just before we get going, I have some questions for you to keep in mind. Were you able to be the flower, the mountain, the water, and the sky? And how did it feel to be those things? And what did you notice? And I'd like you to remember how beautiful and loving you are and how strong and brave you are and how calm and focused you can be and how happy and peaceful you are. And if you need a reminder of those things, you can always go back to your pebbles and grab what you need at that moment. And it always serves as a reminder that you're beautiful and strong and brave and calm and peaceful. So that's a great little exercise that you can do at home. And with that said, I'll pass it back over to Abby Lee for our conclusion. Well, that was the most wholesome thing I think we could have hoped for on a Monday. That was just beautiful, the meditation and the activity. So thank you so much, Michaela and Sophie. I invite if anybody is needing that one last deep breath to take a glance at this breath bubble and just take one last deep cleansing breath in and let everything go, imagining yourself as that free sky expanse of blue that Sophia has just mentioned. And with that, our time together once again has come to a close. It always does fly by, but not to worry. We do have many more Mindful Mondays coming up. Our next one is in two weeks time on July 19th. Uh, same time, it's always at noon, and you can feel free to join us either over Facebook Live or you can sign up via Zoom, which you can do at agw.ca. And we so look forward to having you again, and we wish you a lovely and mindful and restorative week. Um, you know, regardless of what this week is throwing at you, we hope that you have that support to be able to face it with all of the qualities that Sophie and Michaela have described today. And have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your Monday. Stay cool, or if you want to enjoy the sun, then stay warm, I suppose. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.